everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so that you are notified every time I release a new video. So today I wanna to share with you these cards that I made using the Gnome Fold It from the Stamps of Life. I made four cards for different occasions. So you can see here that the Gnome Fold It, it actually makes an A2 size card shaped like a gnome. So when you open it up, it actually has the actual gnome card shape all around. And this one is a cute little Valentine's or a little love gnome. I think he turned out so cute. But you don't have to use it just by itself as an A2 size card. There's so many other options that you can do with this die set. So you can see here, I did do a Christmas card and an Easter card. So for the Christmas card, I have my Christmas tree folded. So it's actually, the, the actual card is the Christmas tree, but I put the gnome attached it to the Christmas tree so it is part of the card. So you can do it like this and use your gnome with other folded dies that you have. You can also use your gnome on a scrapbook page or if you wanted just to put this on an A2 size card front, you can do that as well. Here you can see I use the gnome as an Easter card and I have these little Easter eggs here, how cute, and I used the basket die from the Stamps of Life and I just attached the basket to the gnome. The gnome is actually the card base here, so you can see it again, it is shaped like a card. Although this is not gonna fit in an A2 size envelope, nor is this one, but it will fit in a six and a half by six and a half square envelope. And then this one I think is my favorite of all of them. This is a gnome on a slimline card. And I think this is just so stinking cute. It has the gnome and he's holding, his little hands are holding the word hello. And it has these sunflowers and it fits perfectly on this slimline card base. And this will go in a larger envelope. Now I do wanna point out that this gnome, it does come with these little hand dies. You can die cut the hand so that you can actually have them holding something. So you see here he's holding a present, here he's holding a heart, and then here I just put him holding some sentiments. But you can also have him holding the sunflower, and I also die cut the pumpkin because this is also one of the dies that you can use to put in the gnome's hands, and I thought that was super cute. So let me show you what the die set entails, and then I'm gonna show you how I made each one of these cards. So this is the gnome die that actually makes your shaped card. So you have your shadow layer and this layer will actually make your card base or if you don't want to use it as an A2 size card, it will die cut your shadow layer that you'll glue your layering pieces on. And then you have these two pieces which will cut out the various parts of your gnome. So you can see, and I'm just gonna bring some of these in here just so you can see a little bit, that you can actually die cut different pattern paper, as you see I did, or solid color cardstock, but you're using these dies to die cut these various parts so that you can paper piece them together to fit your gnome. So these are all different color or different pattern papers, and then they're just paper pieced and laid on that shadow layer or laid onto this layer here. So that is your gnome folded, that is this die. Now there's also these dies, and these are just some extras, and these are the cute little things that you can put in the gnome's hands, which I thought were so cute. So you have the heart, the shadow, and then the layering piece. You also have the sunflower, so you have the sunflower here and a little sunflower. You also have the pumpkin, so the pumpkin and the shadow layer, and this was cut with three different pieces of paper. You have your shadow layer, the pattern paper, and then for the stem. You also have your Easter egg. So I have some Easter eggs here. And then you also have your present that you can put in his hands. So uh, these are just super cute. And I'm sure your creative minds can think of other things to put in his hands. You can see the little hand dies, so you can just die cut these out and then glue these on top of whatever it wants to hold. And I'm sure that 
with all of your stamps out there or die, different dies, you can probably figure out other things other than just these to fit in this little gnome's hands. And I just think this is the cutest die set that I just couldn't help but make these four adorable cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I made each one of these cards. So stay tuned. Starting off, I'm gonna take the largest die in the set and I'm going to make the card base. So to make your card base that's shaped like your gnome, you're gonna fold your cardstock in half, and you are going to decide if you want the card to open from the top or from the side. So if you want it to open from the top, just place the fold in your cardstock a little bit below that die and run your die through your die cut machine. If you want it to open from the side, place the fold in your cardstock immediately to the right of the die. There's a little um, engraved words here that says place fold here. So you'll be able to see that once you get your set. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it says place fold here. So that's where you're gonna place your fold in your cardstock, making sure it's immediately to the right of the die opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some washi tape just to hold this in place, and then I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. When that comes out of your die cut machine, you have your card base. This is an A2 size card base, so it will fit in an A2 size envelope. But notice that the side is flat. So in order to fix that, you're gonna take that same die, and you're just gonna die cut a single piece of cardstock. It's not folded, just a regular piece of cardstock. And then that piece will be your layering piece that goes right on top of your card base. You would just glue that down and then you would have your um, card. So you can see here how it does have the regular cutouts and you're not missing any part of that hat. So I'm gonna set my card base aside. I will work with that later. For now, this is the piece I'm gonna decorate. So next I'm gonna take my layering piece and I'm going to pick out some papers that I want to use to decorate my gnome. I'm going to use this pattern paper from the Sweetheart Collection. I want this to be the hat so I'm just going to put the top part of the hat through. I don't want to waste, I mean you technically could do the whole thing but I don't want his beard to have hearts on it so I'm not going to waste any cardstock. I'm just going to put my die right there on the edge just so that the hat is covering that cardstock and I'll run that through my die cut machine. So here's what I get and as I said I just want the hat so I'm just going to snip that part off and I'm just going to start placing this so I know what other pieces that I need. Now this is the edge of the hat if you wanted to you can use that or you can save it for another project and then you have the nose I don't think you'd want the nose cut out of hearts and then part of the face. So this part I'm going to toss, but this I might save for another project. Next, I'm going to take just a scrap piece of my strawberry cardstock, and I want this part cut in the red cardstock. So I'm going to make sure that that is over top of my cardstock, and then I'll run that through my die cut machine. So when that comes out of your die cut machine, just trim away the part of the hat that you want to use with that strawberry cardstock and I'm just gonna place that there. I wanna use the bubblegum cardstock for the nose, so I'm gonna place that over the nose area, run that through my die cut machine, and when that comes out of your machine, I'm just gonna place that where I want it. Next, I want to die cut the beard, so I'm going to place this entire piece on a piece of white cardstock. Now, technically, I don't have to do that. I can just do the bottom part that way I'm not wasting cardstock. And I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So I just need to cut the beard off. So I just need to make sure that this part of the die is on the, my cardstock all the way through where the beard is. And then just add a piece of washi tape to keep these together. And then I'll run that through my die cut machine. So when that comes out of the die cut machine, I'm just gonna snip away the part that I don't want, which would be the nose and any part of the hat and that's gonna go there. And then I just need to do the feet. So I need to decide what kind of color pants I want him to have. I think we'll go ahead and stick with the red since he has red in his cap. So I'm just gonna take another scrap sheet of paper and die cut the bottom part of that die for his feet. So I get these pieces. I get the pants as well as the shoes. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the red 
for his pants. And then I will maybe die cut the shoes out of a different color, just so there's more contrast there. So I die cut the shoes out of the ginger snap and I'm just placing them where the they will go. Now I am going to use my Kiss Cut Pad to put an impression of this gnome on my shadow layer so that I know where these pieces need to be placed rather than trying to um, figure it out on my own, which might take a lot of time. So I have my shadow layer cut out of the powdered sugar cardstock and I'm just going to place the layering die right on top of the shadow layer. I am gonna use some washi tape just to kind of hold this in place, just making sure that this is centered on that shadow layer. So I wanna hold that die, that die in the middle in place. Next, I'm gonna take my cutting plate and I'm gonna place my cutting plate at the bottom. This is the Spelled Up Binders Platinum Cutting Plate that I'm using. Now, I know that this Kiss Cut Pad will work in the Spellbinders Platinum machine. I don't know about any other machines because I haven't tried it, so I don't want to tell you that it will and if it won't. So you'll just have to experiment. But this is a Kiss Cut Pad designed by Stephanie Bernard at the Stamps of Life, and it's going to replace your top cutting plate. So. What it will do is it won't cut the die directly into the cardstock. It's not gonna cut it out. It's just gonna put an impression of that die onto your layering piece, just so that you know where to put all of these pieces. So I am going to take my die, again, making sure that it's centered on the shadow layer, and I am going to make sure that this does not move while it's in my die cutting machine. So I'm going to tape this down to my mat or to my plate. Then I'm gonna put my Kiss Cut Pad directly over top of that. And this is gonna serve as my top cutting plate and I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine. So when that comes out of the die cut machine, I'm just gonna remove these dies. I don't know how well you can see, but there are lines imprinted on this die cut piece that show me where to place my pieces that I have die cut. There, I think you might be able to see it right there. But it has not cut through the entire piece, okay? It just gives you the imprint. Now I wanna say something else about this Kiss Cut Pad. I tried this initially using my Platinum Machine, but I also tried it using my plates that were really worn and you can see how like buckled they are so they're not completely straight and it did not work it actually cut through so i used it this time using plates that were brand new they were completely flat and it actually worked so it um, will take a little bit of experimenting if you are using the kiss cut pad with your machine and doing different, um, using different plates and sandwiches as you run through your die cut machine. But I just wanted to show you that it does work, but you might have to experiment like I did because my plates initially didn't work because they were too badly warped. And now I'm ready to add these pieces so I can actually see where these pieces go. So I don't have to you know, put glue and be like, oh, I hope it's not too high or hope it's not too low. I can actually see where they go on my shadow layer, which is really, really awesome. So before I add them to my shadow layer, I do want to add some ink to the edges of some of these. I always like to add ink because it adds dimension and it just makes everything just pop that much more. So I'm going to use my ginger snap ink and add some ginger snap to the edges of the hat and also to the shoes. And I'm going to use my strawberry ink to add some ink to the strawberry cardstock. And I'm going to use my cloud ink to add to the beard. I'm also gonna come in on each one of these little slits in this cardstock and just add some ink. And it doesn't really matter if you get ink on some of the other white area because this is his beard and you just, I don't know, you just, if, I think the more ink you add, the more dimension it gives. I'm also gonna bring in some bubblegum ink for the nose. 
And now I'm ready to start adhering all of these pieces. Next, I'm going to take this heart die and I'm die cutting the shadow layer out of the strawberry cardstock and the layering heart with it has flowers on it and that's going to be cut out of the candy cardstock. And when that comes out of the die cut machine, I'm just going to poke the paper out of this die and I'm going to layer these on. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And that is gonna go right there on his beard. Now I wanna show you something else that's really, really cool. This die set has a set of hands that you can die cut. So I'm gonna die cut these out of the bubblegum cardstock because I want it to match his nose because the bubblegum is the closest cardstock to the skin color. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add some ink to the edges of this. Okay. Now, what you can do with these hands is after you glue your heart down to the center of his beard, you can come in then with the hands and just glue those right on top and it will look like he's holding that heart. So let's go ahead and glue this down. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Is that the cutest little gnome you've ever seen? So he can be holding that heart. Oh my gosh, I think that's so cute. Next, I'm just gonna layer this gnome on top of the card base. So I'm gonna open this up, lay it flat, and put some glue on the back of this card layer, and then add that to the card base. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a sentiment inside since I don't have room on the outside. So this is a sentiment from the December 2016 card kit, and it's gonna say sending lots of love. So I'm just gonna ink that up in some strawberry ink. And then I'm gonna use some candy ink and I'm gonna stamp out a heart with XOXO. And there is a cute little Valentine's or just a love card with the gnome folded. For my next card, I'm gonna make a Christmas card and I've already put together my gnome. Um, I didn't put them all together, but I put him mostly together. I did not glue his hat on, but I went ahead and glued everything else. You can see that I die cut this layer here out of glitter paper. I wanted to make him look like a Santa Claus gnome. So I have some glitter paper to, you know, similar to like the Santa hat. And then we have the strawberry paper for the hat portion. And then this part is the same as the previous card that I did. So I have the bubble gum, the white cardstock. I did do the ink blending with the cloud ink. And then I have the red pants and I have black shoes. So I'm going to make this, obviously, as you can see, a Christmas card. I'm also gonna be bringing in my Christmas tree fold it die set, and I'm going to be using both of these together. I'm not gonna make the gnome a fold it card. I'm going to actually make the Christmas tree the fold it card, and we'll work on that a little bit later. But for right now, I wanna go ahead and finish decorating this gnome. And I thought it would be really cute to bring in some ornaments. Actually, these are um, just Christmas lights that I die cut out of the blueberry, the banana, and the kiwi cardstock. I did put some ink on the edges of these in the corresponding ink colored ink pads. And I wanna put some Christmas lights on his hat. So I wanted to do that before I glue this down. It will just be easier to adhere them before this is actually glued down in case I need to trim off anything on the sides. So I wanna go ahead and work on that part together. So part of this Christmas tree fold it die set comes with this die, which is a string that you can use for garland on your tree. And then it also comes with this set, which are the, the lights that you can die cut. It also comes with some ornament dies, different size or shape ornaments, and then the star. So I chose instead of the ornaments, I'm gonna do the lights. And I went ahead and die cut the string using some artichoke paper. And there are the three dies that make the strings in three different sizes. So you have the larger one and then the mid-length one and then the smaller one. So 
I had double-sided adhesive on the back of this cardstock, and I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering this down to my card, actually to my hat, the hat layer, and you can see that this string is actually going to be a little bit too long, so that's why I didn't wanna adhere it yet, because I wanted to be able to trim off the ends. So I'm not adhering it fully, I'm really just placing everything where I want it because if I need to reposition it, I still can do so. And if you're using this die, it really is best to have your double-sided adhesive on the back of your cardstock because this is such an intricate die. So again, I'm just gonna place it. Now I also wanna mention that if you don't have the Christmas tree fold it, there's also a die, it's the Christmas tree to stamp and the coordinating dies. It's very similar to this, but it is a smaller size and it also includes the string of lights as well as the ornaments and the lights that you can die cut. So you can use that if you don't have the Christmas tree folded. And the lights that come on the other um, die set, the Christmas tree to stamp, are much smaller in size, which I was debating on using that, but then I said, no, let me go ahead and just use this one, even though they're a little bit larger, just because I'm using the Christmas tree folded and I didn't want to bring in something else. So here I'm just going to kind of just position these lights where I think I want them. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna glue these down. So now I'm going to just trim off these strings that are extending beyond his hat. And again, just pressing that down really well. And then I will be able to adhere this directly on top. Isn't that adorable? Look at that. So you can technically take this and put it on the gnome fold it card base and you can make it a Christmas card, but we're gonna continue to go a step further. I do want to include a present in his hand, so we're gonna put that here and then we're gonna add our Christmas tree. So the present die that comes with this set comes with the shadow layer and the layering piece. And I die cut the shadow layer out of white cardstock and the layering piece out of the strawberry and out of the kiwi because I am going to paper piece this together. So I'm going to cut away the pieces on each one of the die cuts. So each die cut will give me four pieces, the two outside circle pieces, and then the middle part of the bow, and then the top part of the bow. So I'm just gonna snip those away. Now you can also see that these pieces have holes on them. So if you wanted to have a different color cardstock, maybe you wanted to die cut it all out of green and have a red background, you can do that as well. So I am just going to ink up some of these edges. I'm not gonna be using um, the middle reds. I'm just gonna be using the outside reds. So I'm just gonna add some ink around the edges just for some dimension. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside pieces for the kiwi. Now I technically could do two presents here if I wanted to because I'm gonna have enough die cuts. I could do one that is green on the outside and one that is red on the outside. I would just need to die cut another shadow layer. So now I'm ready to start gluing these onto my shadow layer. So here I just took the opposite pieces and just made another present in case I wanted to use this on this card or I can save it for another card. So for the card base, I am using the Christmas tree fold it die set from the Stamps of Life. And to make the actual card base, I'm gonna take a piece of the powdered sugar cardstock and I'm just going to fold this in half. And then I'm going to take my die and I am going to die cut. This is the largest die in the set. So I can either have the fold open from the side of the card or I can have it open from the top. So if I wanted to open from the side, there is a little engraved, there's some engraved words here that say place fold here and you would just place the fold in your cardstock immediately to the right of the die. So the die extends a little bit beyond that fold. If you wanted it to open from the top, you would place the fold in your cardstock immediately below the top of the die. So we're gonna do it from the left side. So I'm just gonna take a piece of washi tape and I'm gonna hold this in place. 
just to make sure nothing moves when I run it through my die cut machine. And then I will go ahead and die cut this. When that comes out of the die cut machine, you have your A2 size card base. Next, I need to die cut a piece of cardstock to go over top of this because this piece right here is flat and I wanna make sure it has the curve in the Christmas tree. So I'm gonna take that same die and I'm going to die cut it out of a piece of artichoke cardstock. And that gives me my top layering piece that I can just glue right on top of this card base. But I'm gonna set this aside for the moment because I wanna go ahead and decorate this piece. So to decorate this piece, I'm gonna take my layering Christmas tree die and I'm going to die cut this out of pattern paper which I already did and I wanted to use the snowflake pattern paper. You can use any solid paper or pattern paper that you want to use. I chose to use a pattern. I am going to take my kiwi ink. So I'm just going to ink up the edges of all of this kiwi cardstock just to add a little bit of dimension here and then I'll be able to glue this onto my um, artichoke layering piece. So the portion of the tree at the bottom for the tree bark, I die cut out of the ginger snap cardstock. Just going to throw some ink on here just to add some dimension to it and then I will adhere this to my tree. So I'm thinking instead of doing the red, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the green because I'm going to put a green Christmas tree and I think that will just add more contrast rather than doing red on red and then and then doing a green Christmas tree on the side. So I think if we do the green, that will just be more contrast because I think that there's maybe too much red if I do the red present. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down. Okay, and then I die cut the hands out of the black cardstock and I'll go ahead and adhere these gloves right onto the present. So my gnome is going to go right here on the right side of my Christmas tree. And I wanna have a sentiment on there. So I went ahead and die cut a Merry Christmas die. This is from a Christmas sentiment die set that the Stamps of Life has for sale on HSN. And at the time of filming, it's currently on there, but when this video is released, I don't know if it will be sold out. But I like this set because the words are small, they're not too big, and I didn't want to have anything too big on here. So I'm just going to position this where I want it. Before I glue my little gnome down, I want to make sure everything fits perfectly. I also want to make sure that my gnome's feet are at the same position as the tree so I don't want it to extend any further down than that tree. So that's one thing I want to um, pay attention to because if this card was standing up, I want to make sure that it is even. I did put double-sided adhesive on the back side of the words. It just makes it easier to stick on. So I'm just going to put that there. I'm not going to stick it down fully yet. I'll peel that back. I'm just going to position this where I want it, which that's about right, right there. And then I'm going to flip this over. Just gonna take a pencil and just outline that Christmas tree because anything to the left of that is where I'm gonna put my glue. So I'm gonna add my glue here, right within that pencil line. And then I'll be able to pop that right on. I can find my place and it should go on perfectly. I took the star die and I die cut the banana cardstock with both the shadow and the layering piece. And I put some ink along the edges of the top layering piece and I adhered them together. I'm also, I also die cut the shadow layer out of the white cardstock and I'm just going to layer that on top. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because when this is adhered to the white card base, I want everything on the back to be white. I don't want to have multicolors. So if I didn't do that, I'd have the, I'd end up having the um, yellow showing on the back, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the back of this yellow star, 
and I will adhere that to this shadow layer and then I will adhere that to my card. And I'm just gonna put glue maybe just along the bottom part. I don't want glue all over the top because some of it's gonna be extending beyond the card base. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this on my card base. So I'm only going to put glue on the Christmas tree. I'm not putting any glue on the gnome. So only on the green is my glue, not even on the star. So add the glue and then we'll add that to the shadow layer. I mean, not to the shadow layer, but to that card base. So we just need to line this up, press that down really well. And then when you open your card, you have your card base and you can actually write inside. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is take my Nuvo crystal drops and just add the drops in all of these circles just to add a little bit of dimension. And these are Nuvo crystal drops in ivory seashell. And I wanna mention that the Stamps of Life does have something very similar to this. Um, they have their glitter drops that match their inks. So if you have those, you can definitely use those. So I'm just gonna put a little drop in each one of these circles, and then I will just need to make sure that this dries flat for 24 hours to make sure everything is dry before I start handling this card. So this should always be the last thing that you add if you're adding them to your cards. I'm just gonna stamp a sentiment on the inside, and this sentiment comes from the September 2019 Kit Club from the Stamps of Life. And it just says, a wish for everything, merry and bright. And that completes this card. So again, the Christmas tree fold it with the gnome fold it to make one large card. Open it up, a wish for everything, merry and bright. Now this is not gonna fit in an A2 size envelope. So I actually had a, an envelope in my stash. This is actually a six and a half by six and a half square envelope. And that will actually fit perfectly within there so you can see there's not even there's not much room on the edges but that will fit perfectly in a six and a half by six and a half square it will cost a little bit more postage to mail this because square envelopes do cost more but it's so worth it look how cute that is For my next card, I'm gonna be making a slimline card and I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that's cut to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And this is gonna be a layering piece for my slimline card. Now, if you wanted to use the slimline card die set from the Stamps of Life and use the large rectangle, you can also cut out the large uh, layering piece with that. And I also am using a cloud stencil, which I created myself using the cloud border from the Borders die set. I just die cut a piece of white cardstock. You can see that this die, this um, stencil that I created, it's been used before. You can see the ink that's on there. And I'm just going to use this to make a cloud border going down my card. Now, if you don't have the cloud border die from the Borders set, you might have the cloud and hexagon stencil from the sunflower class kit and there is a cloud stencil on the same stencil as the hexagon so you can also use that and it would do the same thing so I'm gonna be bringing in my sky ink from the stamps of life and my blending brush and I'm just gonna start at the top I'm gonna to add some ink once I've added the ink I'm gonna move this stencil down one line and I'm going to move it over so it's not the same pattern all the way down my card and ink it up again move it down and then move it over ink it up again all the way through the bottom of this panel So here is my ink blended cloud background. I went ahead and die cut all my pieces for my gnome. 
and I went ahead and put some ink on the edges. Now this paper for the hat I got from the Cozy Basics collection and this is the new marigold color from the Stamps of Life and I did put some tangerine ink on the edges. I thought the tangerine was really nice plus I didn't have the marigold ink and I have the artichoke paper for this portion of the hat. Again I used bubble gum for the nose and then artichoke and then chocolate. And then for the shadow layer, again, just die cut that out of white and I use my Kiss Cut pad. I don't know if you can see the lines on there to put the lines on there so it's easy to see where to adhere these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add all of these pieces. There's my little gnome. He's in some fall colors. I think he looks so cute. I'm going to be incorporating some of the sunflowers on my card. So I have the large sunflower, which I die cut the shadow layer out of the chocolate cardstock. And then the top layering die, I die cut out of the banana cardstock. And that cuts out two of these pieces. And I went ahead and put some banana ink right around those edges. I also took this layering die again and die cut it out of the chocolate cardstock just so that I can have the centerpiece because I want to do chocolate on the inside. So when I layer my sunflower together, it's going to look like this. And same thing with the small one, I die cut this die out of the banana and out of the chocolate. So I have these two pieces and then the shadow layer out of the chocolate. And these center yellow pieces, you can just set aside for another project. So now I'm just gonna glue all these down. Next, I took this grass border die from the Borders die set and I die cut a piece of artichoke cardstock to get a grass border. I did put some artichoke ink just on the edges to give that some dimension. And this grass border is gonna go at the very bottom of my card layer. So I think I'm just gonna put glue here just so that I know where I'm putting it. And then I'll press it on. It's just gonna go a very little ways at the bottom, not very much at all. And then this will be cut off. So the rest of that, we're just gonna take our scissors and just trim that away. So for my card layer, I'm thinking of going with a sunflower slimline card with the gnome. And I have the two large sunflowers and a small sunflower. And I have this large stamp, which is a stem. And it's this stamp right here. And it's from the Daisies to Garden stamp set. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is stamp this out in some green ink and have these sunflowers come out with each one of these stems. There's three stems. And then I'm gonna put my little gnome right on front, like he's standing in a sunflower patch and the sunflowers are behind him. So what I'm gonna do is, I think this is exactly how I want it to be. So when you're recreating this card, you'll need to put your stamp down and then just rearrange your sunflowers where you want it. Make sure when you put your gnome over top that it's not too far up. And then once you have your stamp where you like it, then you can remove all of these pieces and stamp that out. And I am gonna go ahead and stamp this out and I'm gonna be using my Artichoke Stamps of Life ink. So I went ahead and stamped that off camera so you can see the stem there in the artichoke ink and then I can position these sunflowers so that they are right over top of those stems. And I'm gonna start gluing them down. So I'll start with this little one. So I added some double-sided adhesive to the back of the gnome and I'm gonna add him to my card layer. So I die cut a hello die. This is from the jar dies set from the Stamps of Life. The word is out of chocolate and then the shadow layer is out of the marigold paper which matches my hat here. So I'm just gonna add this to my gnome. And I also die cut the hands out of the same bubblegum cardstock that the nose is cut out of and I put some bubblegum ink on the edges and I'm just gonna make it look like he's holding a sign that says hello. So I'm just gonna add some glue to the back of these and add these to this card. 
You wanna try and make sure that these hands are even so that they end about the same spot. So I'm just gonna do my best to make sure that they are even. And then just press those down. Now you could have put a sunflower there, but I just thought that would have been too much. So it would have been too many sunflowers. So I went ahead and added that and I think that looks really, really super cute. So for the card base, I have a piece of marigold card stock and you can use your slimline card dies to die cut the card base if you have them. Otherwise, just take a regular piece of card stock, cut it down to seven inches and then score it at three and a half and you have your card base. And then we will add that to the card base look how adorable that is oh my gosh i think that's probably one of the fa my favorite cards that i've ever created i think that is so stinking cute so there's my gnome fold it on a slimline card using the sunflowers as just flowers growing in a patch and putting a hello in his hand i think that turned out really really cute Now for the Easter egg, you have the two layering pieces. You have your shadow layer and you also have your top layer. And I die cut the shadow layer out of just white cardstock and the top layer out of various pattern papers. And I'm just gonna throw some ink on the edges of these. So I have pixie, candy, kiwi, and banana. And I'm just gonna do the corresponding ink colors from the Stamps of Life just to add some dimension to those edges and then I will adhere all of these to their shadow layers. So I use this basket die and I die cut a piece of bubblegum cardstock to get my basket and I put some bubblegum ink along the edges. I've already done that part. Now I wanted to have a background for this, which this die does not come with a background. It just comes like this, but I wanted a background so I could stick my Easter eggs in it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just push, put this just gently right above, right on top of this white cardstock. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just going to trim away. And now I have a background for that die. So before I add these to my basket, I'm gonna use some of these Nouveau Drops and I'm just going to add some dimension to these by putting some of these Nouveau Drops in these circles. And I will need to let these dry before I work any further on this because I don't want to smear them, obviously. So I went ahead and let all of these drops dry. Look how pretty that is. And it adds such nice dimension to these eggs. And if you don't have these Nouveau drops, the Stamps of Life does sell some of the dimensional ink that are, um, do the same thing so you can definitely use those now I'm thinking instead of doing a white background for the basket I'm going to just go with a pink background I'm going to save this though because I'm still going to use that and I am going to cut a similar color so we're going to do another piece of the bubble gum and then I'm going to start placing these in here so I'm gonna have it similar to this. And then I went ahead and already put my gnome together and I put him in some spring colors. And I'm gonna have the gnome sitting in front of this basket. So we're gonna have some space here on the left. That's why I'm scrunching these eggs over to the right, just to leave room here for that gnome. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these eggs to my basket. So I'm gonna have, I'm going to put my top ones down first and I'm only putting glue on the bottom half because this one is gonna go right over top of both of those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and put some glue and add that to the front of that basket. And then I'm just gonna trim off some of this excess cardstock here on the left side. And then I'm going to adhere this white piece to the back of this because this is gonna be a folded card and I wanna make sure that the back is solid white. I don't wanna have two different colors on the back side. So first I'm just gonna make sure I trim this down enough so that I don't have any white extending over the edge. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and put glue on the back. 
And then just press that down really well. And that is gonna go right here on the right side of my gnome. So I wanna make sure that it is even at the bottom. So I'm gonna line it up till about where his foot is so that it is straight. And then I'm gonna flip that over. I'm just going to trace this with a pencil. So just trace that with a pencil. And then we're gonna add glue to the right of that pencil mark. So I'm going to use the Sentiment Easter Greetings, and that is from the Words for Wreath stamp set from the Stamps of Life. I thought about putting an Easter egg here, but I really wanted to put a sentiment on the outside, and I didn't know where else I was going to put the sentiment. I didn't want to cover up this. I didn't want to put it on this hat, and there was nowhere else to put it. So unless I left it off, I'd have to put it on the inside. So I wanted to have it on the outside, so I'm going to go ahead and center it right here i did um, cut them they're two separate pieces and i just cut them down to size with my trimmer i did put some kiwi ink along the edges and i stamped it out with some candy ink so i'm just centering it there under his nose and i die cut the hands and again i'm gonna put them here like it like he is holding the sign Look how cute that is. Okay, so now I need to put this on a card base. So the card base is gonna be a gnome card base. So I need to get a gnome card base to glue this piece on. So I'm taking a piece of powdered sugar cardstock and I am folding it in half. I'm gonna take my die, my shadow die, and I'm just going to put the edge so it's extending a little bit beyond the fold in the cardstock. And I'll go ahead and tape this down so it does not move when it goes in my die cut machine. And then I will run this through my die cut machine. And then I'll just remove my die, take off that washi tape that's stuck there. And this is my card base. So this is what I'm going to adhere to my gnome. So when I adhere this, I'm going to open this up so that it lays flat. And the only thing that I'm gonna put glue on is this gnome. So I'm gonna put glue, actually it's probably best, since I don't know where this gnome ends on this side, it's probably best if I put glue on this piece and then just set the top piece on there. Isn't that adorable? So there's my card, so when it opens, it opens this way and you can see that everything on this side is completely white because remember I put that white backing on that pot. And then you can also see that anywhere you had those pencil lines, I didn't even have to worry about erasing them because this card layer goes right on top of that and it hides that for me. So that is my Easter card. Now this card will also fit in a six and a half by six and a half square envelope. So that's what I have right here underneath it. And you can see that there's plenty of space on the sides for that to fit. So once again, here are all of the cards that I made with the Gnome Fold It die set. If you liked this video, go ahead and give me a like and leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite. And be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials from me. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.